Good morning, brothers and sisters. Well, God laid it on my heart to give everyone a chance to take the feminist test. God has a feminist test in the Bible. That's what I believe. It's amazing. God's word is so full of knowledge. It's amazing. And uh, so here's the test. I'm going to just give it to you. And, I, and then I'm going to ask you a qu some questions. And then I, from those questions on what you believe in your heart, I'm going to give you a judgment of why or why not that you believe in feminism or, of course, why you are not been brainwashed by feminism in the world. Okay? All right. So first I'm going to give you the test. And then secondary, and this is and this is a slow brainwash that's been going on for 50, 60, 70 years now. Okay, probably started way back with uh, Virginia Slim, and they're uh, trying to say that women's rights are, you know, to smoke a cigarette are here. We're free now, baby. All right. So here's the biblical test. Okay, we have two stories. And I'm going to ask you a question, which ones are worse? Okay. So we start in Genesis with the book of, Ab I mean, I mean in, in the book of Genesis with the uh, father Abraham. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a uh, Wait a minute. I thought it was Lot. No, it's Lot. I'm sorry. Okay. It's not father Abraham. But Lot is Abraham's son, okay? I mean, brother, pardon me. Brother, okay? All right. Now, after Lot and the, the cities were destroyed, as it says here in verse 29 of Genesis 19, it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, Sodom and Gomorrah, and that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him in a mountain. For he feared to dwell in Zor and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. Why? Because I'm sure that Zor was full of many Sodomites as well. And if you don't understand that Sodomite in the Bible literally means for a man to lie with a man, which means have sex with the same sex. It has the world's trying to make you believe that sodomy is only butt sex. Not true at all. It's all homosexual behavior, transgender included, LGBTQ, all of it. Okay, that's all sodomite. Okay, okay. So it says, and the firstborn son born. Unto Lot said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, and that we may preserve of our father, seed of our father. In other words, their kids, they will have kids from um, their father lot and they made their father drink wine that night and the firstborn went in and lay with her father and he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose perceived not meaning he did not lot did not know because he was drunk with wine that his daughter laid with him and it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she laid down, nor when she arose. Second time, Lot did not know, right? Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name Ben-Nami. Uh, the same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. Okay. Now we're going to, the second part of the test. Okay. Now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 
Paul says, and, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, as on, as on, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For here thereto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So why, were, why was he feeding them milk and not meat? Because the meat of the word is hard things to understand. So they have been carnal, right? And it says, it says right here, there is among you envying and strife and divisions. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? Now let's zip over to the fifth chapter of the same church. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, commonly. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his, his father's wife. What is that? That's having a, a boy having sex with his mother. Right? Okay. So now you have the two stories. And let me just finish saying here, it says, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that ye hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. This is the same church that is carnal. Paul cannot feed them with the meat of the word because they are carnal. And if you don't believe that fornication is a problem, you can just run over to 1 Corinthians 6, 9. And what does it say? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters. And this kingdom of God stands for salvation. So you are not saved if you keep on practicing fornication, right? But worse yet, in 1 Corinthians 5, one chapter back, we are doing something worse than that, aren't we? Boys are having sex with mama. Okay. Now, now I'm going to ask you a question. Who is more guilty here? Is it the boys who are having the sex with mamas with their mom? Or in Genesis 19, is it the daughters who are having sex with their father? Who's more guilty here? I'm not at, I know they're both guilty of incest. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe it's more of the boy's fault here than the daughter's fault? Now, if you answered yes, it's more of the daughter's fault, you, I'm sorry, if it's more of the boy's fault right here in 1 Corinthians 5, you're guilty of feminism brainwashing. Now, it's not something that you are you know, going to hell over, okay? You're just brainwashed by it, okay? You need to clean it out of your brain, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you why. Because you weren't listening to the story if you thought that at all. Okay, we have two stories here. Both are having incest with their parents. One of them is the daughters, the two daughters of Lot. The second one is unnamed boys having unnamed sex with their mothers, right? Who's more guilty? And if you said they're both, they're both just as guilty then you're not guilty of feminism. You see? But if you said, if you lean more toward it is the boy's fault, you're guilty of feminism. Now I'll tell you why. <laughs> what did I point out in Genesis 19? That Lot perceived not he was drunk when he had sex with his two daughters and he was an old man right here it doesn't even say they are old women or women mothers and it says they should have sex had um, his father's wife so we don't even know how old these people are we don't know how old the boy is he could be an adult obviously he's pretty much past the age of 12 to have sex with his mom 
But who knows? Could be even younger, could be far older. Okay? Did the, did the mother know? Of course they knew. The mother said, oh, look, my son is much sexier and younger skin. Lust of the flesh, pride of life is not of God, is it? And she's lusting after her own son and having sex with her. But Lot never did of anything of the such. He never perceived it ever happened. He was drunk. And he was drunk because his daughters gave him the wine to do it. So if you have any spiritual knowledge, you realize actually it was Lot's story. The women were far more wicked than these boys who were having sex with the older mother. Why? Because the mother knew they were having sex with the boy. And Lot never knew he was having sex with his daughters. So if you believe at all that it is the boy's fault more than the girl's fault, then you're definitely guilty of feminism. If you believe the stories are equal, you're still not seeing the truth of it, are you? You failed in your spiritual understanding. And hence, this is why I brought up the story of Ellen DeGeneret because and if you noticed my video in there and the comments down below, I show over and over all the reasons why you are not seeing the spiritual world and how the sodomites are destroying this world just like Ellen DeGeneret. And most of them are all globalists. Most of them hate Donald Trump. Most of them love drugs and child trafficking because that's their neighborhood. That's their community, as YouTube would say. You have violated our community guidelines. You have violated our love speech to love sodomites. You are hate speech. It's all a brainwash, folks. Are you going to be of this world? Are you going to see the spiritual things and learn to judge correctly? Because if you don't learn to judge correctly, if you run over to 1 Corinthians 6, the very next chapter, it says, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? That's right. Revelation chapter 20, verse 3. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? And these are speaking of fallen angels, the wicked ones. How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. In other words, the elders judge those who are least esteemed in the church, the ones who are still on mama's milk. The ones that are still getting the milk of the word because they don't understand the meat of the word because they're still carnal. They have not sanctified their lives. The Holy Spirit has not manifested out of them to bring forth righteousness. That is the, your works wrought with faith to make faith be made perfect. That is your manifestation coming out of your mouth and out of your life. The edifying of the saints. So, don't ever believe and try to run with Matthew chapter 7 say that we don't judge anyone as Christians. Because Paul said the complete opposite because this is not the context of a Christian. What it says right here, it says, judge not that ye be not judged. Meaning anytime you do judge people, what do you get back? You get judgment back, don't you? Yes. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. 
Just like I said, he's saying it again. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. If I judge rashly, I get rash judgment, don't I? That's right. I see it in the threats. But unfortunately, I ha the, the word of truth does cut down to the bone and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews 4.12, the sword of the spirit. So in order to use the sword of the spirit, that's what it's going to do. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt you. It's going to judge you and your heart and your intentions. So when I use it effectively, it seems rash. But it not is not really. Not if you receive the love of the truth that you might be saved. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thine brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Meaning, you're a hypocrite. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? And there it is. Thou hypocrite. You see, he never told you not to judge. He just warned you, if you are judging, you will be judged back. Does that have anything to do with meekness to not judge? Yes and no. You could be meek and you can still judge. You can be meek and not judge. You can be humble and judge and you can be humble and not judge. You see? The perfection of the saints, Holy Ghost, working through you to provide good works. Am I guilty of judging wrong? Of course I am in my life. I'm just a man. Sharing with you God's word. I love you in Christ. But remember, don't fall for the feminist movement. If you thought that Lot was much more wicked than the mothers in the, in the 1 Corinthians chapter 5 having sex with their boys, you're definitely guilty of feminism. Thank you for listening. Now, folks, you know what I think of medicinal marijuana from the THC psychedelic side of it. But the facts are cannabis industry has been unleashed by our president when he signed into law the 2018 Farm Bill legalizing medicinal marijuana into federal law. President Trump realizes the benefits of medicinal marijuana and its need to be researched at the federal level. So this has opened all kinds of sides of the industry to be explored as this industry continues to grow at a phenomenal rate. The fact is, cannabis industry is a very lucrative industry. The fact is, people are abandoning their wine tours for cannabis tours in America now. Cannabis is here to stay, and it's only getting bigger by the day. Cannabis has many medicinal effects on the CBD non-psychedelic side of it. So whether your investment be growing it or buying into the stocks of cannabis, it is a win-win situation as this industry continues to explode please check out the mud long informational video posted in the link down below where john boehner former speaker of the house is speaking about it he's all in on it whether you are for smoking it or for the non-psychedelic cbd side of it that is your choice what you do with it you can't pass up this chance to take advantage of this informational offer on how to make a bundle of money on a medicinal plant that was created by god and on the face of the earth for our benefit but was outlawed for several years.